Welcome to the final episode of our coverage of the Bloom Festival 2019. Now it's been a record breaking year with more gold medals than ever awarded to the show gardens in Bloom's 13 year history. There are many elements that go into creating a garden. You start off with the design and the layout, then of course you look at plants and plant combinations bearing in mind things like colour, texture and structure. But to give the garden that extra something, that extra element and to lift it from a mere garden to a show garden, look no further than a piece of garden sculpture. I met up with Ken Folan of the Kildare Gallery earlier here at Bloom in the Sculpture Garden and I asked him what people should look out for when choosing a piece of sculpture for their garden. People should try and pick a piece that works with their garden. Um, if you'd have a contemporary type of garden, contemporary house, an abstract piece always works quite well. Try and find a piece that you fall in love with. Something You're going to have to look at that every day. So, you know, you'll know when you see a piece, sometimes it'll just hit you, just like that. So. So you've, you've chosen the perfect sculpture for your yeah. garden, or at least something that you like. How should you use it? How would you work it into the garden? Um, lighting, I think, is very important, because Ireland, we get a lot of dark winter evenings. You can enjoy the sculpture then, uh, throughout the winter as well, with the right lighting. Uh, um, get advice from your garden designer as well. That always helps. Um, they'll pick a piece that'll suit and work in harmony with the surroundings. Material is important as well. I think um, for maintenance as well, you want easy maintenance and there's one material I quite like is core 10 steel. Um, that will actually weather quite nicely, it'll rust, the rust will seal itself. If you get any scrapes on it, it'll heal itself, it'll actually seal over and rust over time. So that's it. And it's, it's a lovely look as well. And it's very on trend at the moment, isn't it, that core 10 steel? Yeah. What else is popular at the moment? What else are people looking for? Bronze. People love bronze. They're, they're more expensive. Uh, there's you'll definitely see value out of it. If you pick the right artist, it can be an investment. The piece actually might increase in value. We've had some clients who've bought a piece and it's actually doubled and they've sold it at auction and then reinvested their money in a, in a bigger garden sculpture. Ken, thanks. Uh, I hope this, uh, this show is a continued success for you. You're doing well so far? Yeah, we're doing great. Some good brilliant. sales and like thousands of people coming through here every day. So it's great. Bloom is fantastic. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Peter. Cheers. Some fabulous works of art there in the sculpture in the park area here at Bloom in Dublin's Phoenix Park. Now people visit this festival for many different reasons. Some to look at sculpture, some for ornamental plants and more and more people are coming to see how to grow their own food. I'm here now with Mick Kelly of the DIY movement and Mick, you've seen this area of gardening develop hugely over the last few years, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's amazing. We, we've been going for 10 years, Peter, and um, I think probably when we started it was a bit of a kind of a niche thing that people didn't really kind of know what it was about. Uh, a bit of a lifestyle choice back then for people and I think it's just gone more and more mainstream over that time which is great like we'll about half a million people probably will take part in a GIY program this year in, in Ireland and the UK so it's it's an unbelievable scale at this stage that is brilliant so you yeah. branch you branched part of the pond but you branched yeah, into the UK now at exactly. this stage yeah well. like started as a tiny community project down in Waterford kind of went national now into the UK and hopefully beyond further afield and, and it kind of needs to be that you know given the scale of the problems we have around food and sustainability and so on. I think growing your own food is something, people are kind of crying out for something very positive to do about, about that, you know, and take control of it. So we would always say to people, just do, do as much as you can do, you know, it doesn't have to be all about self-sufficiency, just anything you can grow yourself is really worthwhile, you know? Yes, and I think if, if enough of us make that small individual change, then yeah. soon enough that big change becomes. Exactly, and it totally changes even the five you know, 5% of your own food that you can grow, it changes the rest of the food you eat because you're better armed with, you know, a bit of knowledge and a bit of understanding how food works. It's great. 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 Well, continued success here at the show. Thanks, Peter. During the last few days, I've met up with some familiar faces and I've been asking them about their garden experiences. I enjoy being in the garden, but I don't like getting involved too much. And because I'm a bit cack-handed about things, my task is cutting the grass. So I do that, I think I do it rather well, but the old lawnmower. I was, um, I was going on a lawnmower for the first time, it was only like a year ago. I was doing my lawnmower for the first time and I didn't know I had to hold the cable behind me. So I went over the cable and I blew up the whole electricity of my house. So <laughs> The grass is big enough, I think, to warrant uh, the motor mower, but sometimes I get too close to the edge and I then end up slicing off the grass. Not a great look. Uh, an, e an edging or a board around a lawn that's actually mud brown. 
I don't know if it's embarrassing to watch my wife working in the garden, which I love to do uh, often, particularly when the sun is out. And you're sitting there in, in, in the patio looking out at my wife as she digs the garden. She's a great work, little worker, and I'm very, very proud of her. So I decided we'd take a little stroll through the meadows. You do lots of lovely grass wafting through the breeze and everything else in a pair of short pants and, of course, uh, just flip-flops. And uh, then she brings in whatever she's, uh, whatever she's dug up from the, from the vegetable patch, and I watch her cook it, because I also think it's important to support her in every way possible. And that evening we are in the pub and we are having a little drink or two and as when I go to the toilet as you do after the few points that you have uh, you're there and a bit of a scratch and a bit of a this and going what is that what is this and eventually we get home and we're at home and within an hour I am crossed just with my trousers down up to the air, my wife has a bottle of whiskey in one hand, cotton wool in the other hand, dabbing ticks that have decided to lodge into every crevice of my backside. And in the other hand, then, a tweezers is waiting to take out drunken ticks out of my backside. We counted 54 ticks. 54 ticks. I suppose the most embarrassing. Um, I've got some statues of West Ham. <laughs> so, remember, I know wildflowers are good for the bees, but look at them, don't run with them. Well, some pretty interesting admissions there, I think. Now, this urban sanctuary garden was designed by Kevin Dennis, the cityscape gardener, and it was designed as a contemporary urban space, which aims to inspire those living in our towns and cities to engage more with the outdoor space. And of course, engaging with that outdoor space has incredibly strong mental health benefits. And it was illustrating this, which was the motivation which drove designer Robert Moore to create the memories are made of this garden. That was built for the Dementia Understand Together charity and earlier today I spoke to Robert about his inspiration for that garden. This garden centres around the power of reminiscence and nostalgia and how that can trigger these sort of memory paths for someone living with dementia. Just certain things, objects, scents, um, even the visual stimulation, just something that will trigger these sort of memory paths and, and allow people to sort of access memories from their, typically from their youth. Someone living with dementia, typically the demographic relates to it would be a childhood of the 50s. So all of the visual sort of stimulus in this garden relate to the sort of 1950s. Really what we're trying to sort of achieve with this garden is not just so that people can access memories, but they can share those memories in the present. We worked with some focus groups, some social clubs, some co dementia coffee mornings. When we did a mood board presentation and just brought some photos to to show what we were kind of presenting. Over the course of a couple of hours, people started to contribute when we went around into smaller little groups. There were certain things they would relate to mammy and daddy and engaging in the gardens. There's loads of little things in the garden that relate back to those initial meetings. Okay. The sculpture we have here is the one modern piece in the garden. That represents the present. It's about people accessing, connecting with the past and then connecting the past with, the, with now. You have a riot of colour going on here. That's a, a brave move in a show garden, isn't it? To, to drift from a specific palette of colour to, to so many different colours. Yeah, there's, a, there's certainly an extravagance here. Yeah. There's, there's some very vibrant, even peaches and yellows that ordinarily you would be a little bit cautious about using, but, but bringing even the sort of Arthur Bell, the yellow roses, into all of the beds, into sort of, even into the tall standards in the back, it just brings a sort of a it brings a connection between the planting and obviously the whole story about this garden is all about connection. Yes, and it does connect it together, it ties it together. Yeah. Robert, it's a fantastic garden, I can't yeah. say enough about it. Thank I you. love everything about it, I love the story, I love the colour, I love the design. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Brilliant thank garden. you. Thank you. Thanks a million. Yeah. It was really inspirational stuff there from Robert and what's a really beautiful, meaningful and thought-provoking garden. Now, We've been asking you all week to tag the Irish Gardener in your social media uploads from the Bloom Festival and many of you have been doing just that and on screen now you'll see some of those images. Don't forget to keep tagging us with your photographs of Bloom or your own garden and if you've enjoyed the event here in Dublin's Phoenix Park feel free to post that or any other feedback on the page and we'll be sure to pass it on to the organisers. In terms of our own coverage please do the same. If you've enjoyed it let us know. If there's something you'd like to see different for 2020 let us know that too. And in the meantime, with all that being said, I'm going to leave you now with a look back on what has been a very memorable weekend in Bloom 2019. That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay now, from the beginning. <laughs>